teams in the NFL to meet a division rival, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are playing a lot better under their rookie quarterback the last two weeks. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosting the New Orleans Saints on the NFL on Fox. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. I'm Sam Rosen along with Tim Ryan. Best start ever for the New Orleans Saints, 9-0. But over the last few weeks, some mistakes have crept into their game. And as they meet up with their division rivals, the Buccaneers, there's some concerns for the Saints. Well, and there should be some concerns, Sam, when you look at them. Now, it's been a great year, but there's plenty of room for improvement. If you watch the last four games on tape, there have been issues, in particular with the ball security. That's got to change today. What I love about this team is the balance. They are running it as well as they're throwing it. That's a huge statement. Now, their depth is going to be tested today. Reggie Bush out of the game. They're down two starting corners. When you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the rookie quarterback, Sam Josh Freeman, has given him a real shot in the arm. He's 1-0 here at the home stadium. Points on offense since he's been in the lineup have gone from 13 points a game to 31 points a game. That speaks for itself. Now, he'll have a monumental challenge today against the Saints defense and Greg Williams. Historically, Greg Williams, a coordinator, has made things very, very difficult on rookie passers. The Bucks defense will have a monumental challenge as well. They're facing the best offensive team in the NFL. They've got all the weapons ready to go. We'll be back after this from the Verizon Football Zone. Saints fans love this division rivalry, and they've come to Tampa hoping their team can go 10-0 this season. Now it's time to take a look at the key yellow book moments to look for today. Tim? Sam, when you look at the Saints, they are down two starting corners with Jabari Greer and Tracy Porter both out of the football game. So you have to ask yourself, how does the secondary hold up? And for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, no doubt they have got to establish a running game and force turnovers to help the young quarterback, Josh Freeman. Those were the key yellow book moments to look for today. And what a day in Tampa. Warm temperatures, humidity is up there, and there will be a breeze during the course of the game. We're getting set for the Bucks and the Saints in just a moment. We are back in Tampa. We had the military flyover just moments ago. For the head coaches, key and actives, a lot of top players are out for the New Orleans Saints. Albert Mack out for Raheem Morris and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Sean Payton's got starters out, especially those two cornerbacks. That'll be a key. And uh, Reggie Bush, he's not here. And getting ready for the game, Chris Hovan and his son. This is how he gets oh, his son that. ready to play. Love that. I think son's getting daddy ready to play, too. I, I know he will. He whispered in his ear, okay, Dad, there it is. you got to get to the quarterback that, today. I, I think that's it. Good coaching. Kiss to his, oh, that's great. his bride. And now we're ready to play. The New Orleans Saints have won the toss. They've elected to receive. Connor Barth, who's shown a strong leg in his two weeks with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, will kick off. Courtney Roby, who took the kickoff to start the second half last week against St. Louis, back 97 yards for a touchdown, is deep. And the Bucks and the Saints are underway. Roby, four yards deep, brings it out. Finds an opening, slips one man, and a good return up to the 24-yard line. And there is the number one quarterback in the NFL, Drew Brees, yards and attempts first, second in rating, second in touchdown passes with 19. But when you talk, you talk about the top quarterbacks in the league, and everybody we talk to says the same thing: Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, all in the same. All yeah, in that and, group. and I think finally, over the last couple of years, Drew has been starting to get the national recognition that he deserves. There is no question he's a top five quarterback in this game. Fake the pass, run the draw to Pierre Thomas. Up to the 30-yard line. Tory Cox in as a fifth defensive back made the stop. Check out the rest of the starting lineup. Pierre Thomas will see the heavy load running today. Marcus Colston, Devery Henderson, outstanding wide receivers. Jeremy Jockey enjoying a revival. Is playing very well. The offensive line has been strong. Zach Streif gets the start instead of Jermon Bushrod at left tackle. On second and three, three tight ends in. Darnell Dinkins motions and breeds to put it up with time. Going short to Pierre Thomas. He's got a first down out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Baron Rude chased him out. 
check out the Bucks on defense. They've been changing the defensive line a little bit. Tim Crowder gets the start at defensive end. Jimmy Wilkerson important on the pass rush. Barrett Rude, the leading tackler. Quincy Black had a big interception last week. The corners will be tested, but Akeem Tlaib is playing well. Rondé Barber, the veteran, and of course, Tanar Jackson has been a ball hawk since returning from suspension. Robert Meacham in as a third wide receiver. Empty backfield. Breeze gets time and throws to Jeremy Shockey. Out of bounds, up close to the 39 yard line. And Jeremy Shockey has now caught a pass in 105 consecutive games. And Shockey has had a really good season. I think you look at Jeremy Shockey, and he's finally healthy. The sports hernia last year, he was coming off a broken leg before the hernia, and you can see from his numbers there that he's having a good season. To me, he looks leaner. Much better running after the catch, and how good was that throw right there from Drew Brees in tight coverage? Pinpoint accuracy. Kyle Eichel in at fullback. Mike Bell is the running back, and Bell with a little cutback in the hole. Comes up just short of the first down marker, about a yard short, up to the 42 yard line. Barrett Rude made the stop. We all talk about Drew Brees and the skilled guys. I want you to watch this group on the inside today Carl Nix, Jonathan Goodwin, and Jari Evans. Look at the movement 77 and 76. Nix and Goodwin get right there on Chris Hoban. Those guys in the interior of that offense. And a great job by Mickey Loomis getting those guys in there. Fourth round pick, fifth round pick when you talk about Nix and Jari Evans. I haven't watched the center and two guards on tape all year, Sam, that are playing as good as that trio. Five defensive linemen in. Roy Miller in for the Bucks on third and one. The toss to Pierre Thomas, and he slipped as he tried to cut back, and he's short of the first down. And the Saints will be forced to punt. And the fans here in Tampa love it. Anytime you can slow down the Saints, who have had scored six times on their first possession in a game in nine games five touchdowns one field goal and here they're stopped and that's a good thing obviously a positive for the Buccaneers they have really struggled against good offenses no doubt this is a good offense early in games starting fast that's good stuff Morstead draft pick this year with a good punt Clifton Smith backs up waits for a fair catch at the last moment and takes it and around the five yard line that's a good punt by Morstead, 53 yards. No score in the game. Bucks have the ball when we come back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. Back in Tampa, Greg Williams, defensive coordinator of the Saints. Uh, his teams have done very well against rookie quarterbacks, Matthew Stafford and Mark Sanchez. They played against them and just totally shut them down. They beat Detroit 45-27. They beat the Jets 24-10. And Sanchez had a rough day. Starting from the five-yard line, Chris Presley at fullback his first NFL game. And he leads the blocking for Cadillac Williams, who picks up two up to the seven-yard line. For the Bucks, offensively, Josh Freeman, his third NFL start. He's played well in the first two. One win, one big comeback coming up short last week. Ernest Graham at fullback will get some running time as well. Kellen Winslow's the number one receiver and the guy the Saints are most concerned about. The offensive line has been solid. And there is Josh Freeman. Four touchdowns, two interceptions. Got like Williams with a good run up to the 14 yard line bring up a third and one for the Bucks. the Saints defense has improved they get pass rush from Will Smith and Charles Grant Smith has seven and a half sacks Anthony Hargrove starting for the injured Cedric Ellis linebackers have been solid Jonathan Vilma all over the place making tackles Randall Gay, Malcolm Jenkins starting at the quarterback. Jenkins, his first NFL start, first round draft pick out of Ohio State. Replacing the injured Jabari Greer and Tracy Porter. The rookie matchup up there. Freeman out of the shotgun, late blitz, gets rid of it, completes the windfall, and a first down. 
for the Bucks at the 21 yard line. Good job of, by Freeman of hanging in there with a the blitz coming late. Well, and that's what Josh Freeman does is he holds in there pretty good because you're going to see Winslow is going to come crossing route over there, but you're going to see pressure. Vilma comes free on a blitz, and Freeman off of his back foot throws a perfect throw to Kellen Winslow, who was on a drag route across the formation. Jeremy Stevens in at tight end, replacing Kellen Winslow. Goes down at the 21. The wide receivers, Antonio Bryant back from injury, and Michael Clayton. The inside handoff, cut back by Ernest Graham. Breaks a tackle. And a good effort by Ernest Graham. Up to the 38-yard line. Scott Fujita makes the tackle. But that's what the Bucks want to do, establish that running game. Well, make no bones about it. They are going to run the football today, and they're going to try to run the football today. And it's good to see Ernest Graham get an opportunity. Only 13 touches all year long. They got six blockers. There's only six defenders. And Ernest Graham's able to find a little bit of a crease. He's a good block by Donald Penn. Uh, out on the edge, but it, yeah, out on the edge. But it's good to see Ernest Graham get touches early in this game. He has not touched the football nearly enough this year. His longest run of the season, 17 yards. Graham shifts, and the, the rush is on, and they got him. Big time rush that time, led by Will Smith. Give him eight and a half sacks now. Came into the game tied for third in the NFC with seven and a half. One of the best pass rushers in the league should not come unblocked, and that's what happens here is Will Smith. Everybody blocks down. Turn protection down to the right. Nobody picks up Will Smith. Quarterback's got to know that he's got to get that ball out to the swing route out there to Ernest Graham. Smith had to be shocked. Look, oh, he loved that. In front that of me. Now, that doesn't happen very often, and when it does, you got to be able to seize the opportunity. Will did right there with a sack. His career high is 10 and a half. He's tied his second highest season total. Now Josh Freeman, either confused or concerned about the alignment, calls a timeout. No score in the game. Sam, you can see how big the sack is against this Bucks offense. When they get a sack on a drive, they got a 0% chance of scoring a touchdown. 18% chance of scoring on a drive, scoring a touchdown without getting sacked. Once that quarterback, quarterback gets taken down, 0% of getting in the end zone. Let's see if they can buck that trend on this drive. Second and 18 from the 30. Flag on the play and a quick pass out for Sammy Strada. Strada, it's off his hands and incomplete. We'll check out the flag. Walt Coleman is our referee. Offside, 92. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's on Remy Adell, the head coach of the New Orleans Saints in his fourth year, Sean Payton. And an important season for the Saints after not making the playoffs the last two years. I think he's really matured as a head coach, and I think he's matured along with his football team. It, at least to me, watching him on tape this year, and obviously having the running game and the defense and all that helps, but it looks like everybody's getting right together, Sam, at the right time. Two tight ends, two wide receivers. And Cadillac Williams in the backfield. Freeman checking off. It's Cadillac Williams. Runs into a pile, bounces off. And Malcolm Jenkins was able to drag him down with help from Darren Sharper. The Saints have really struggled with their run defense, having issues the last three weeks. You see Michael Turner, he goes for a buck 51. D'Angelo Williams, Sam, he rushes for 149 yards rushing. And then last week, week 10, against the St. Louis Rams. Steven Jackson absolutely chewed him up for a buck 31 on the ground. And that was after the first five games when they averaged giving up uh, 83 yards per game. Three wide receivers on third and 13. Have to get to the 48 for a first down. Freeman gets time. Nobody open. Decides to run for it. And he's got the first down. Just short of midfield, good run by the big quarterback who says he prefers not to run, but that time he picked up 15 and he's a good runner. I think he needs to continue to run. He's got such a big body. He grew up watching Ben Roethlisberger, Donovan McNabb, and watch this cut as he gets back to the middle of the field, which I think is huge. They got eight guys in coverage. The fact was that a lot of them were covering up the numbers and down the sidelines. He saw a big opening in the middle of the field. One, one. 
put that cleat in the dirt and got himself a first down. And you love the fact that his size, he didn't slide. On first down, Cadillac Williams. Behind Ernest Graham gets in the Saints territory. Down to the 48-yard line. Saints bring in Demario Presley, number 90, at defensive tackle. Good and drive thus far for the Bucks. They recovered nicely after the, the big sack. Well, they're doing what they want to do now. They're moving the chains. They're staying ahead of schedule. And Sean Payton knows it's going to be a difficult task here today against the Bucks. You know, the Saints have not won on this field, Sam, since 2006. They split Cadillac Williams wide left. Clayton goes in motion. Graham carries. And he cuts through. Sharper grabs him and brings him down, but a good run by Ernest Graham down to the 36-yard line. And they're going to get a face mask, too, on Ernest Graham at the end of that run. He got ripped down by his grill. Love to see the Bucks going back to the power run game. Blocking down, getting Davin Joseph out there pulling. That's what they're best at. So nice to see Ernest Graham showing up. Well, they got Graham lined up as a fullback, but he's actually a second tailback in there as they got two running backs with Cadillac Williams. Coleman, Walt Coleman, our referee, 21st year. Personal foul, face mask, 42, defense. 12 yard run. First down. Tech on 15 on the personal foul. You'll see Sharper here is, yeah, that, oh, yeah, I mean, you rip the head, turn the head, hang on to it all the way to the ground. It's an easy call for the back judge to make. The ball spotted at the Saints 21 yard line. Raheem Morris, the young head coach, hey, Mike, five, one, Mike, five, one. looking on his team off with a good drive. Chris Presley in the fullback number 45. For the Bucks. Derek Ward carrying inside the 20 to the 18. The Bucks have been a very efficient team when they get into the red zone. They haven't done it all that much this season, 17 times. But when they get to the red zone, they've been able to score touchdowns. Yeah, they've been very efficient down there. As you said, they just don't get down there enough. Greg Olson, and I, I think talking to him on Friday, he's excited they're getting back to the power run game. You know, when Jack Gzinski came in here as offensive coordinator in the offseason and really implemented and installed the zone scheme, it's been to me like trying to stick a square peg in a round hole. They're back to what they do best, and that's the power game. Two tight ends, two wide outs. The fake to Derek Ward, rolling his Freeman, throwing to the end zone, broken up. Excellent play by Roman Harper as he stepped in front of Kellen Winslow and broke it up. Harper having a real good season for the Saints. And has really benefited. Here it's going to come crossing route right there. And the ball's just behind Kellen Winslow. If he leads Kellen Winslow out in front, that's probably a touchdown because there was a pretty big window for Josh Freeman to slide it into. And he knows it. But you're right about Roman Harper. I, I think when you talk about Greg Williams when he got here, probably nobody on the defense has benefited more with his style of play than Roman Harper, the strong safety. 12th play of the drive for the Bucks. Eight runs, three passes. Bobby McCray in at defensive end for the Saints. Freeman steps up. Pressure, rolls, looking, throwing, deep in the end zone, touchdown, Michael Clayton. The Freeman family celebrates. And Freeman bought time with that movement in the pocket. A great job by the rookie quarterback. His pocket presence is really uncanny. His strength in the pocket, he never panics. And I think Michael Clayton went down and pitched a tent in the corner of the end zone and just camped out and hung out there for a while while Freeman bought time, extended the play, and then delivered a perfect ball. What a drive. 12 plays, 95 yards for the Bucks. Who now leads seven to nothing on the extra point by Connor Barth. Josh Freeman feels the pressure, extends the play, and finds Michael Clayton. And the Bucks have the lead. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Hyundai. Tis the season to fill your commute with comfort and joy during Hyundai holidays by Domino's new mix and match deal. And by Kayak. Search one and done. Back in Tampa where the Bucks, with a great drive capped it off with this touchdown pass. Watch Clayton go right to the corner of the end zone and I think here's the guy right there 24 
Lee Torrance, who's supposed to, I think, have deep half. You got Vilma deep. Looks like cover two. And there's nobody back there for the deep half. And that would have been clearly, uh, in my mind, Lee Torrance. And that was an easy throw and catch for a touchdown to Michael Clay. Donner Barth kicks it off. Roby comes up and takes it at the nine on the run. And a good return as he's wrestled down across the 30 yard line. Drew Brees comes back on as the Saints get their offense together. Thursday is Thanksgiving. Great food, great family, great people, and great football. Packers and Lions, Thanksgiving Day. It all begins with a Bill Ford Tough Fox NFL pregame show at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific. Saints start from the 31, three wide receivers, Robert Mitchum in. They run the ball with Pierre Thomas and they get nothing. Led by Geno Hayes, the Bucks stop the run. There's a lot of reasons why the New Orleans Saints are the number one offense in pro football. And but he'll say points and yeah all well, that's a big one and they're 38 points a game but look at what they do on first down which is huge in terms of setting up second and third they're the best in the NFL on second down they face the fewest third downs and they've got the fewest punts in pro football that's called staying ahead of the chains Sam on offense Breeze off the play fake wide open he's got David Thomas the tight end inside the 40 breaks a couple of tackles gets knocked down at the 31 yard line. Quincy Black made the stop, but David Thomas, who had a good game last week against St. Louis, comes up with a good grab and here. And he's been a lot better than they anticipated. He's coming out of the slot. Rude's the guy that's got to get to coverage on him. You see Barrett goes to run with him there. He sticks it inside like he's going down the seam and then just makes a hard break right to the corner and a perfect throw from Drew Brees. They get a lot of production out of their tight ends, don't they? Well, Thomas. that guy's really, really versatile. You'll see him in a lot of different alignments today. 37-yard pickup. Brees hands to Pierre Thomas inside the 25. Time for our update. How about the other undefeated team? Kurt Menefee, the Indianapolis Colts. What's happening? They're off to a better start against the Ravens. Peyton Manning, look at this catch by Dallas Clark. One-handed holds it in. Uh, that guy's a tight end, you sure? Colts on top of the Ravens, 7-3 in the first quarter. Sam and Tim. Nice hands. He looked like he was carrying a tray of food. Injured player down on the field for the Bucks. Chris Hovan. Oh, Sam. boy. We check on him. We'll step out for a moment. Chris Hovan went to the sideline holding his left arm tight to his body. He seems a little better right now as he sits on the bench. Let's see what happens. Well, here. Carl Nix puts about a 345 pound tidal wave right on his back. And that's what happened. Carl Nix just splashed him and landed on top of him. That's a big dude right there. You're right. I think it was an arm or a rib that Hovan was holding. Bucks have three rookies on the defensive line. Second and three for the Saints. Short drop. And the quick toss over the middle is complete to Marcus Colston. Down at the 15-yard line. That's a first down for the Saints. So a good answer by the Saints after the Bucks score. They quickly march down the field from the 32 down to the Bucks 15. Hovan is back on the field. Yeah, they'll the need him. He's their best run defender, Sam, on the inside. Look at the play selection this year for the New Orleans Saints versus years past. 62-38 run to pass this year. Perfect balance at 50-50. Mike Bell in at running back. Three wide receivers. Split the tight end as well. The delay to Bell. Good hole. Barrett Rude pushes him back inside the 10 yard line. Picked up a five on the play by Mike Bell. And Sean Payton has really rotated his backs very well. Gotten a lot of production out of Pierre Thomas, Mike Bell, and the guy who isn't here, Reggie Bush, who's inactive today. Yeah, and they all have different styles. I'll tell you one thing about Mike Bell, though. You don't see a lot of guys running harder or with lower pad level than Mike Bell. Now, this guy's a journeyman. He's bounced around the league a little bit, had an opportunity down here. In New Orleans in the offseason, and he's ripped it up. Second and fourth and nine. Braves throws, completes to David Thomas, and it looks like he's got enough for the first down just inside the five yard line. Tenard Jackson with a tackle, and again, they had Thomas and Shockey in there, and both tight ends are threats. Well, and Drew Brees is just here, here's what Drew Brees thinks, and, and watch as he turns just a little stop, a little quick out route right there. 
right past the first down sticks. But here's what Drew Brees thinks about, and he's told me this. I think first downs, not touchdowns. It's exactly what he did right there, getting it past the first down stick, now having more shots at the end zone. First and goal inside the five. Brees with time, looks and throws. Robert Meacham reaches touchdown. Drew Brees with plenty of time and that short pass to Robert Meacham and the Saints have answered right back with a beautiful drive of 68 yards. I don't know if there's anybody better right now in the league than exploiting matchups than Drew Brees just in terms of his recognition and his awareness and he knew right away that he was going to have Meacham matched up matched up on a linebacker and Geno Hayes bought himself a little time rolling to the right. And again, we've been saying it all day through a perfect ball. 20th touchdown pass thrown by Drew Brees. Tyson, well, actually, Peyton Manning had one, so he's still one behind Manning, who has 21. Extra point is good by John Carney. The number one offense in the NFL responds to tie the game. In a man's career, there are always people who play an important part. For Drew Brees, it happened back in his days at Purdue, where he was a great quarterback. The quarterback coach at Purdue at the time is Greg Olson, <laughs> who's now the offensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had great success together, and earlier today, they stay in contact all the time. In fact, Greg Olson has asked Drew Brees in the offseason to help young Josh Freeman well out. only because he knows Josh Freeman is, is worthy of it in terms of being a great guy with a huge future and, and Drew told us Greg Olson was absolutely Sam instrumental in his development in terms of his mechanics his release and all the stuff he does in the pocket Thomas Morstead kicks off for New Orleans Clifton Smith from three yards deep brings it out finds a lane and he gets across the 30. He is a threat to break it any time he puts his hands on the ball. Good return by Smith of 35 yards. We've got an interesting interactive question for the fans today. Fans, we urge you to log on to FoxSports.com. If you were an NFL coach and could select any quarterback to win it all, who would you choose? Any active quarterback? Submit your choice to foxsports.com slash NFL and throughout the game, we'll check in on the voting. Thanks for taking part as well. Buck start from the 31 with two tight ends in. Short drop by Josh Freeman. And throws wide, almost intercepted, almost threw it to Randall Gay, the cornerback. He tried to get it to Kellen Winslow, but he was a little off balance on the throw. It didn't seem like he set himself. Well, he'll do that now. He'll throw from all different platforms, and some of it's risky. I went back and watched the tape from the Miami game, and he's gotten lucky on a couple of throws. But I'll say this, Malcolm Jenkins, who's out there subbing today for uh, Tracy Porter over at the right corner, he just did a very, very good job of defending that slant because Freeman wanted to hit the slant on a quick three step drop, but it was well defended by Malcolm Jenkins. Freeman, Cadillac Williams in the backfield. Cadillac with a cutback. Gets across the 35 to the 36. Picked up five on the play. Well, you can see Josh Freeman when he's done in his first two starts, and, and a lot of it has been under 20 yards. You can see there that. Two of the seven times he's been behind the line of scrimmage, so seven attempts behind the line with the smoke screens and the bubble screens and all that stuff. But it's really under 20 yards is where they've been conservative and have asked him to to do his work, and rightly so with a with a rookie quarterback. There's a third and five. Last week Freeman had a rough first half, better second half, and a big comeback in the fourth quarter to give the Bucks the lead late against Miami. Dolphins wound up winning. That pass was caught, but out of bounds. Good effort by Kellen Winslow against Scott Shanley, the linebacker, but Winslow couldn't get both feet down in bounds. We have reached the end of the first quarter, and it's been a good one in this division rivalry game. The Bucks and the Saints are tied at seven. Welcome back to Tampa. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, and the Buccaneer girls. Hunt. Dirk Johnson with his first punt of the game. Aaron Sharper back deep, waves for a fair catch, and takes it at 
the 18 yard line the Bucks 40th three and out of the season second most in the NFL second to the Oakland Raiders. Today's game is sponsored by Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is as cold as the Rockies and ready for kickoff. By Citizen Echo Drive. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. And by Ford. Drive one. First quarter statistics. The Bucks running the ball well. And the Saints passing the ball well. Drew Brees, six for six, 63 yards. And one touchdown. Saints with three wide receivers start from the 18. Bucks with five defensive backs. Tory Cox in. The draw play to Pierre Thomas. Spinning up across the 25 yard line. Good pickup of seven on the play. Looking at the first quarter for the Bucks, I'll say this. I think you got to be happy with the way that they played. They're right in this game. Josh Freeman has gotten some good support from his running game. Ernest Graham with a couple of real nice runs. And then. As efficient as he's been, Josh Freeman, he has been sacked one time, but love the fact that he saw the bust in the coverage on the touchdown throw and was able to exploit it. And he had the recognition. He recognized it in a hurry, and he got it in the end zone for a touchdown. Roy Miller in on the defensive line for the box on second down. Quick pitch outside to Debbie Henderson, wrapped up by Rondé Barber. Short of the line of scrimmage. Good job, good close by Rondé Barber. To stop Devery Henderson. Well, when you have over a thousand tackles in pro football and you're Rondé Barber, this is easy stuff. Watch Rondé just go right through Robert Meacham, who's trying to block him. Look at him dip, almost like a pass rusher. Dipped his shoulder down, able to roll his hips by the blocker and then finish on the receiver. Good stuff. Good work there by Rondé Barber, the 13-year veteran. Loss of two on the play. Third and five. Two tight ends in for the Saints. Shockey and Thomas. Braves throws for Shockey, rather for Thomas, who was broken up by Barrett Rood. Good job by the middle linebacker, Barrett Rood, and a good defensive series by the Bucks. Flag down. We check this out. They're going to see, I think, if Barrett Rood grabbed and turned. Oh, boy. David Thomas before he batted the ball out. There's no foul for illegal contact. All right. Walt Coleman says. No foul. They pick up the flag after the conference. Just an out route. Yeah, Barrett Rood hit him right there, but it was right at about the five yard chuck zone line. So not a problem. Very well played, tight coverage. Good bat down by Barrett Rood. There's Thomas Morstead, fifth round draft pick with a good high kick. Clifton Smith back to the 19. It's up to the 30 yard line. Good return. And the Bucks playing well on both sides of the ball and trying to upset the undefeated New Orleans Saints. Saints defense with some injuries as uh, the Malcolm Jenkins, the first round draft pick, and Randall Gay starting today. Lee Torrance getting a lot of playing time as well. And the two guys that are out, Jabari First Greer and, and Tracy Porter, are both very good players and have both been a big part and have had a big impact on what these guys have done this year on defense. Greer is getting close to coming back. The handoff, Derek Ward across the 35. Picks up five on the play. And the Bucks have been picking up good yardage on their ones. I think they're finally starting to find their identity. And, and, and look, it's been a work in progress with Derek Ward and trying to find his reps. Watch the left tackle here, Donald Penn. See the block that he comes up with. Let him take Demario Presley three and a half yards off the ball. These guys are starting to know what they want to do and finding their identity in the power run game. It's Ward again, little cutback. Short gain up to the 37. Bring up a third and three for the Bucks. Remy Adel made the tackle. And I'm glad to see Raheem Morris going back to the power run game. And I was talking about it earlier and all the zone stuff that they've been doing. I don't think that their offensive linemen are built to play the zone. I think when you look at Jeff Fain, you look at Davin Joseph, you look at True Blood, all of those guys to me, Jeremy Zuta, good space players, which means they can get out and pull and have a big effect on the defense. Sammy Strader in as a third wide receiver. Usama Young in as a fifth defensive back. On third and three, Freeman with time. 
And the pass is a little wide. Intended for Sammy Strawner. And it's three and out again for the Bucks offensively. That time Freeman had time and he had a man open. Did not deliver. Kirk Johnson on for his second punt. Every Henderson is back deep to receive this one. Six yards. Looking toward the sideline. Line drive instead. Caught on the run by Henderson. He's brought down by Tory Cox at the 33 yard line. Good coverage on the play by Tory Cox. He gets down in a hurry, makes a good tackle on Demery Henderson. Overcast and ominous clouds rolling around the stadium looking like we might get some rain. There is some wind today. With 15 to 20 miles per hour. Saints start from the 33 yard line. David Thomas lines up as a fullback. In the backfield. Breeze off the plate fake gets time but the pass is low. Intended for Pierre Thomas out of the backfield. Gino Hayes covering on the play. What makes Drew Brees so good at seeing tangible, Sam? Look at him here. He's got a pre snap read, looks out to his right, sees that he's got man coverage. He senses a blitz coming to his left. Now, decision making, gets to that back foot, makes a quick decision, and has a lightning release, and then, of course, the pinpoint accuracy. And all of those things add up to one of the best quarterbacks in the game. And what the other Saints players were saying is that he beats you Monday through Saturday with his preparation. Short pass. Here Thomas takes a couple of hits, stays on his feet, and battles his way up to the 39-yard line. Here Thomas has really come of age as a running back in the NFL. Started last season, and when he got a lot of playing time with Deuce McAllister down with injuries, and all that play, playing time has paid off. Well, he was a great college free agent signed by Mickey Loomis. And everybody talks about Richard Mendenhall at Illinois and now doing great things for the Steelers. Richard Mendenhall could never get on the field at Illinois because of that dude right there, Pierre Thomas. Third and four. Crowd urges on the Bucks defense. Six defensive backs in. Breeze with time. Gets it to David Thomas, a first down in the Bucks territory. Little crossing pattern by the tight end. Pickup of 13 on the play. Breeze is 8 for 10. Looked like Torrey Cox may have gotten picked or bumped and couldn't stay uh, with Torrey, Co uh, Torrey Cox staying with David Thomas. Here's David Thomas. He's here. 27 is the guy trying to cover him. Got man coverage. Oh, he's just late. He's just late getting on him. It was a quick crossing route. Drag route right across the field and Tory Cox was late Sam in his recognition. Two tight ends in David Thomas lines up as a fullback. Rocky goes in motion off the play fake. Breeze looking wants to go deep and he does. Way down incomplete intended for Robert Meacham. There's a flag on the play. It looks like interference on the Bucks. Savvy Piscatelli. Had a look on him saying, What? That's just a smart play by Robert Meacham, is what it was. On the play for defensive pass interference. There's not enough restriction. Second time they picked up the flag. There's 21. He's Ronde passes it off to Savvy Piscatelli, who's on his horse, just trying to run with him. Ooh. There was a little shove there, I thought. And he was never no. looking at the ball either. All right. No, Savvy was never turned around looking at the ball. So they pick up the flag. Tell you what the good receivers do is when they see that ball coming and if they can't get to it, they'll put the brakes on, fall back into Savvy Piscatelli, and get a sure pass Watch interference. It. Okay, yeah, he's jersey. He's right. touching him and bumping him before the ball got there. Okay. Should have been called. David Thomas splits out. Breeze goes short to Mike Bell and a good tackle on the play by Rondé Barber at the Bucks 43 yard line. It'll bring up a third and five. 
Ronde is such a ridiculously good tackler in space. We saw him running around Meacham earlier, getting in on a play. We saw him run right, run away through the center. Jonathan Goodwin on a play in space. And then you just saw him there, just chopping the legs out, knifing right through Mike Bell. Ronde over a thousand tackles, Sam, in pro football. Speaks for itself. Mike Bell goes to the sideline, limping a little bit. Pierre Thomas in on third down. Greens for Shockey and Ronde Barber broke it up. They tested Ronde Barber with Jeremy Shockey, and Barber answered the test. You can still see he's got great quickness because Shockey's going to stick a cleat down and run an out route. And Rondé Barber just turns on the Jets and undercuts and is able to lay out with his right hand and get a bat down. Rondé still playing at a high level. And with all this new stuff in the scheme, Sam, he's played more solid than what people are talking about. Saints have had the ball four times here in the first half. This is their third punt. Good defensive play by the Bucks. Morstead's kick is high. Clifton Smith lets it bounce. And the Saints keep it in the field of play. Usama Young covers it at the one yard line. 42 yard punt. Good coverage by the Saints. Roby was down there. Young was down there. Roby keeps it in. Young covers it at the one. Saints running back Mike Bell got injured on this play on the tackle by Rondé Barber. Went to the sideline, checked out by the medical staff, and testing it. A challenge flag has been thrown by Raheem Morris of the Bucks, thinking that maybe that ball was Tampa over Bay the goal line. Ruling on the field that the ball is dead at the one yard line. Thinking that maybe Courtney Roby touched it when it was had broken the plane. Well, that doesn't matter as long as it doesn't touch inbounds and he's not on the plane with his foot on the goal line before he touches it. Yeah, that looks that looks like a that's good fine. Play. That's fine. Now does Usama Young as he goes down. Does any part of his body or hand touch the line his foot his knee. None of it. I think that's staying right where it is just short of the one. Let's see watch his feet as he lifts off there. He's still in the field of play knocks it back. That looks like a good play. Good coverage by the Saints. Well, it's not touched. It's not touched at all at the six, and it's certainly not downed until it gets to about the one yard line. I think this is going to be a challenge that Raheem loses. Nobody, nobody touches it. This ball's staying on the one yard line, in my opinion. Kind of surprised about the challenge. What about you? Uh, very much so. You bet. Sean Payton, who has the best winning percentage of any New Orleans Saints coach. This is fourth year. There's Courtney Roby, good return man, good special teams player, good speed, got down there in a hurry. And listen, special teams is a big part of this game. And talking to, to Sean Payton yesterday about it, and he, he I mean you know how good the Bucks are in all their units and Greg McMahon and and New Orleans have done a nice job yes. too. He he was worried about the special teams. Part of this game today was Sean Payton. They've done a good job with their coverage units. At the start of the game, they down one down inside the five with the punt team. And the Bucks, who scored on their first possession, a 95-yard drive starting from the five-yard line, a great drive. The last two times they've had the ball, it's been three and out. Walt Coleman has made his decision. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. No player touched the ball prior to it being down at the one yard line. Tampa will be charged with their second team timeout. So the Bucks will start from the one yard line. Well, not only, Sam, does that take a timeout, but it limits you from having an opportunity to get a third challenge later in the game if you have to have one. It's kind of a double whammy. Raheem Morris. Now the Saints defense looking to put some pressure on here. Why wouldn't you? I think Greg Williams somewhat astonished the defensive coordinator of New Orleans going back and watching 
Josh Freeman in the last two games is defenses haven't needed him up. They haven't turned the dial on the blitz looks and the packages and sending all the pressure. I think we're going to see more of it as this game goes on today. And we've got seven men up front. Getting outside, Derek Morris just got out of the end zone as he was tripped up by Roman Harper. Good play by Roman Harper. We said it earlier. Well, let me tell you what started is Demario Presley, the defensive tackle, number 90. Watch him right here get push on Davin Joseph. That's what's going to get this play started. I mean, he pushes Davin two yards into the end zone, which forces Derek Ward to have to bounce it. He's lucky he got that out of the end zone. Harper is really coming on. Talked about how much Darren Sharper has helped him. Off the play fake, Freeman throwing and completing to Ernest Graham out of the backfield, and Graham is pulled out of bounds at the eight-yard line. It's a good pickup. That's a good call. A good safe call for the quarterback. But you love the fact that they've got enough confidence in him that they're still letting him throw from his own end zone. He just took Ernest Graham that time, and again, good to see Ernest a bigger part of the game plan. Just round an out route on the middle linebacker, and Freeman threw a perfect ball. Saints bring in six defensive backs. Three wide receivers for the Bucks on third and three. And they stop the play. False start against the Bucks. False start, 65. Offense. Half the nation to the goal. Still third down. It's the right tackle, Jeremy Trueblood, who wants to know what he did. There's Trueblood. Didn't Whoa. see anything. Did they? Hmm. They either got the wrong guy or they made a bad call. Right, he didn't. There was no foul there by Trueblood for sure. They have to get to the 11 yard line for a first down. Freeman gets time and throws, and a great catch by Antonio Bryant. He threw that ball with Bryant not even looking. Well, he turned and there it was. And, and that was by design. A back shoulder throw. Very good coverage, but watch Josh Freeman in the ball location. You saw the receiver. And the defender were even with each other. That tells the quarterback, throw to the back shoulder. Malcolm Jenkins never sees it. Terrific throw and terrific recognition and catch by Antonio Bryant coming back and getting it. Pickup of 21 on the play, up to the 25. So Bryant coming back from injury makes a big catch. Go, go, go. Derek Ward with a good run for the 32. Let's check out what the Packers are doing today. Go back to Kurt Manapay. And this is a nice play for the Packers. Aaron Rodgers against San Francisco hooking up with Greg Jennings. And Jennings goes 64 yards for the score. And the Packers have a 13-3 lead in the second quarter. Sam and Tim. Thanks, Kurt. Packers trying to keep pace with Minnesota. Three games behind in the division, but certainly in a race for the wild card. Two tight ends in. Cutting it back, Derek Ward throws for a loss on the play. Scott Fujita, Saints missed him when he missed three games. And that's when their problem started as far as stopping the run was concerned. I fully agree with that. Here's Fujita, 55, is going to get up into the line of scrimmage and get a tackle for loss. At Williams in the defense because of how versatile he is and how Greg will use all of his talents in different ways. There's third and four. They bunch three receivers to the right side. One is Kellen Winslow. Freeman gets pressure, throws, intercepted by Malcolm Jenkins. Jenkins with a couple of blockers is out of bounds at the 30 yard line. That was a poor throw by Josh Freeman. He got pressure, and Jenkins with his first NFL interception. Yeah, I think the receiver falls down, Antonio Bryant. Now, these two haven't had a lot of time together. Watch 89. Yeah, he just falls down. That's exactly what happened. It was a timing route, and if you slip on a timing route, you're absolutely dead, and that's what happened. He fell down. Josh delivers the football right where it needed to be, 
And let's see if this ball hits the ground before Malcolm Jenkins is able to catch it. Let's see if it, it didn't look like the ground forced it to bobble at all. That looks like it's going to be an interception, but I think the receiver falling down there, Sam Bryant, was the big key. Play by the Saints who continue to force turnovers. Lionel Hamilton, the first year man out of San Diego State, carrying with Mike Bell a little banged up on the sideline. Hamilton, Hamilton getting a little playing time. Now he goes off and Pierre Thomas comes on. Look at that number 26 takeaways this season. There's Greg Williams. He's sitting down and there he is just came over talked to his two corners a little bit that's been the best thing they've done on defense opportunistic you go back to the last three seasons collectively may have been the worst team in the league in forcing turnovers Sam now they're the best Breeze throws low and incomplete was it picked off it's being returned by Barrett Rude and now they whistled as being down and that it hit the ground the referee indicating or the official indicating that it was batted down by Quincy Black and hit the ground Barrett Root got up and was ready to return it pretty good pressure by Jimmy Wilkerson coming off the left end there's Jimmy he's going to get a nice rush there on Stinchcomb going to get right in Breeze's face there the ball goes up in the air Quincy Black saying roll baby go now here's where you're Raheem and you really I know he's got one challenge left but this is going to exhaust him right here. All right. Tampa is challenging the ruling on the field that it was an incomplete pass. Well he's using up his challenges right it's now. It's over. That's it. Let's see what happens here is. No, it hit the ground right there. It hit the ground right by the left foot of Pierre Thomas. Then it goes up in the air. Not wise again, I think, to waste your challenge because there's no chance this thing's going to go to Tampa Bay. Seemed like Raheem Morris is a little too impulsive. Well, I think it's he trusts his players. I think he listens to his players. I'd have my headphones on listening to the box. The guys upstairs that are watching it on TV or watching it on the Jumbotron long before I'd ever listen to my players it's happening too fast down there for the guys on the field in real speed I mean I, I got to go right upstairs and let the technology do its work and what my coaching staff is seeing up in the box on the television or on the jumbotron and this is the best view right there you see the ball bouncing now did the ground here's a question did the ground and did the ball actually hit the ground or did it bounce up off of his foot it's really really hard to tell from that angle if any part of that pick skin touches the grass which it looks like it does right there yeah. that's incomplete pass boy you're talking about inches can you imagine if it just hit the foot well, And full speed you can't tell and that's why you don't listen to your players I'm sure Quincy Black ran over it's a challenging coach it went up you can't listen to the guys on the field things are happening too fast for the naked eye to be able to digest it. So the Bucks will be out of challenges for the remainder of the game. Peyton talking to well not only that said they'll be out of timeouts for the rest of the, the rest of the, the first half. half right after reviewing the play the really on the field stands incomplete pass Tampa's charged with their third and final team timeout of the quarter and that is also their last challenge for the game now what that is telling us is that there was not enough evidence to overturn so whatever they saw wasn't enough to overturn the call on the field. Pretty good hit here on Drew Brees from Jimmy Wilkerson. Yeah. And Greg White falls on him a little bit. Jimmy's a good rusher now. Jimmy is leads the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in sacks. He's got five and a half. And this guy's been really a backup most of his career in Kansas City. Finally getting an opportunity since he got here to Tampa. Good to see him in the starting lineup. Third and seven for the Saints at the Bucks 26 yard line and they go empty backfield 
four wide receivers. Courtney Roby is in as the fourth. And they split Shockey as well. Everybody out. Breeze gets time, goes short to Roby, and he's short of the first down. Brought down by Tory Cox. Short of the 20-yard line. Good tackle by Cox. And Tory Cox forced more into the game today because Albert Mack is out with an ankle injury. And that was good stuff there by by Cox getting on the crossing route and tackling it before it got to the first down mark. Saints are thinking about going for it. And Drew Brees has called a timeout to go over and talk things over with Sean Payton. It's going to be a fourth and about a yard and a half. Next Sunday, another big doubleheader day on Fox. The Buccaneers will be at Tampa Bay, excuse me, at Atlanta in a big division matchup. And later on, another big division matchup. The Bears and the Vikings. And it all begins with a built Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. And I'll say this so you just mentioned Minnesota, and they're going to go for a field goal here. I think Minnesota and what they're doing is an absolute blessing and silver lining to these New Orleans Saints to keep winning games, Sam, and to win as many. And obviously, you want to win as many as you can, but knowing where Minnesota is at 8 1, I think is a good impetus for this team to, to keep it rolling. This is a 38 yard field goal try for John Carney. Mark Brunel is the holder. Jason Kyle the long snapper. The kick on the way and it's right through. Carney is money 40 yards and in 45 years old and he's still making field goals. Well earlier we wanted to get you involved and asked your opinion on who you would pick if you were a head coach and you wanted to win a game, uh, who would you pick for your starting quarterback? And here are the votes thus far. Brett Favre has the early lead at 34%, followed by Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, and Tom Brady. How can you argue really with any of those guys? But th this one surprises me here. Now, I know Brees and doesn't have maybe the national recognition some of the other guys do. Now, that's coming. But Tom Brady with pelts on the wall, with rings in the <laughs> drawer, and if you haven't voted yet, log on to foxsports.com slash NFL and cast your vote. Tim, you like Brady? I would have to take Tom Brady, I yeah, think. I go in with, a big, big game yeah. in a Super Bowl. You know, I, and, and look, people say he's not playing real good this year. AFC Offensive Player of the Month in October, Tom Brady would be my guy. It'd be tough to go wrong with any of those top guys. I think I might lean toward Peyton Manning a little bit, just a little bit. But if if I t if you take Brady, I'll take Manning. If you take Manning, I'll take Brady. It ran into a few Saints. Took him down at the 24-yard line. The tackle by Troy Evans and pushing and shoving. There's Chris Reese involved for with the New Orleans Saints. The officials settled things down. We're looking at Josh Freeman. I tell you, his development over the last couple of weeks has been impressive and throws a touchdown to Marie Stovall last week and just a good example of a young quarterback going through his progressions first read Sammy Strouder up the seam second read Kellen Winslow on the post third read Marie Stovall on the fade and watch what Freeman's eyes do here first read there's the second read now all the way over to the third read knowing he had Stovall versus press coverage and throws a dart for a touchdown really impressive watching the rookie quarterback go through three reads and then throw a touchdown pass. Four for nine this afternoon. Cadillac Williams with a couple of moves, and he's brought down at the 28 yard line. He picked up four on the play. First quarter, the Bucks were running the ball very, very well. The Saints have tightened things up here in the second quarter, making it harder for them to run against. I think Ernest Graham on a 17 yard pop was was a big one that skewed that number up a little bit but I'll tell you Demario Presley you just saw him go off the field they'll need him and run defense what is that? pretty good player there's Cadillac again and there's the wall maybe picked up a yard on the play brought down just shy of the 30 yard line the man the other man they're missing is big Cedric Ellis out of USC the defensive tackle but he's close he practiced some this week he's close to coming back and has has the ability to be a premier defensive tackle in the league does does set Ellis and remember they also lost Kendrick Clancy early in the year one of their other starting defensive tackles and he's 
being checked out. It is Presley on the sideline. That's the old tight quad right there. Tight thigh muscle. Stretch it out. Last time the New Orleans Saints won nine games in a row in a single season was in 1987. Jim Mora was the head coach. Bobby Hebert, the quarterback, was throwing to Eric Martin, Dalton Hilliard, and Reuben Mays running the ball. Pat Swilling and Ricky Jackson applying the defensive pressure. And the owner, Tom hey! Benson, was having a grand old time. Those look like but your this, moves, Sam. Those look like your moves, bro. Yeah. I got those. I know you do. <laughs> right, wall. right, right, right. This is the first time the Saints are 9 0 to start a season. Sammy Strawner in as a third I'm wide receiver on third down. Freeman being rushed. The pass too high. The blitz coming from Scott Shanley, the linebacker. He got into the face of Josh Freeman. Freeman. Now four for ten. I told you I thought Greg was going to start heating it up, and he, he didn't at the beginning of the game. And Freeman completed some nice balls, in particular the touchdown, which is really what was a cover two look, and ended up being a busted coverage by Lee Torrance. But since then, he has dialed up the pressure packages and forced the ball out quick from Josh Freeman. Last four possessions for the Bucks, three three and outs, and one interception. Devery Henderson waves for a fair catch at the 30-yard line. 40 yard punt. Josh Freeman learning on the job here. Well, and it's hard for all rookie quarterbacks, but in particular when you get in third and long. And look at the third and long success in the conversions this season. And this is league wide. Uh, you know, third and 11, 34%. But look after that how it just goes down no. the percentage of conversions. You get up there third and 11 plus. Not a lot of plays, Sam, in the playbook that are going to get you first downs. And what teams do is they look for the deep, the deep hookup. If it's not there, typically it's throw it to the check down and punt. Leo, Leo, Leo. Saints start from the 31 with one timeout and a 10-7 lead. Three wide receivers to the left. Breeze gets time. That pass was tipped, pops in the air and falls incomplete. Geno Hayes made an effort, almost intercepted. Derek Roberson was there as well. But that pass was tipped coming out. I think it was Kyle Moore that got it. Came down from his right end position, the fourth round pick out of USC. And said, hey, listen, if you're not getting rushed and you're stuck on the line of scrimmage, mirror the quarterback, get your hands up and get a tip. That's what he did. Again, three wide receivers. Up inside of Pierre Thomas, a couple of yards before he's pulled back. Bucks are getting great playing time and great experience for a young defensive lineman. You mentioned Kyle Moore, number 94. He's a rookie out of USC, fourth round pick. Roy Miller, rookie out of Texas, third round pick, getting a lot of time. Michael Bennett, rookie out of Texas A&M. They picked him up on waivers from Seattle, getting a lot of playing time. Valuable experience. Third and eight for the Saints. Six defensive backs in for the Bucks. Everybody out. Breeze, hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. It was caught by Colston but out of bounds. And that time, the Bucks brought pressure. Well, and Zach Streif is blocking right here, and he's out there because he's good at power and handling power. He doesn't handle it very good right here because, oh, it's not even it's not even power. It's a spin move. What a move. Terrific hit on Drew Brees. And Styles White needs plays like that to stay in the lineup. He was almost inactive today. A last minute change of heart by the coach got him in the lineup. Fourth punt of the game for Thomas Morstead. A good high punt. Clifton Smith waits for a fair catch at the 25 yard line. And we invite you to take part uh, in some real good programming. Log on to FoxSports.com Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, for some great new shows. How about Monday? It's the after party with Jake Glazer. Talks to some of the top players on from Sunday's games. On Tuesday, it's Coach Speak with Brian Billick. He's got Jack Del Rio, John Harbaugh, Mike Singletary, Mike Smith, and a whole lot more all week long. It's FoxSports.com on MSN, and we call it Lunch with Benefits. I think you'll enjoy it if you log on.
from the 25 yard line three punts and an interception last four possessions for the Bucks. three wide receivers and no timeouts Cadillac Williams a loss on the play good penetration up front led by Jonathan Vilma the middle linebacker we've reached the two minute warning close game Saints with a 10 3 lead. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Your world delivered. So far, it's been pretty good. And talking about the story of the two corners being out, the starting corners, Jabari Greer and Tracy Porter. And here you see Malcolm Jenkins, the rookie, got his first start today. Also got his first interception, Randall Gay. They played pretty good. Randall Gay had a rough game Second last week. Uh, but he's played pretty good so far in this game. Now Lee Torrance is out there. For him, and I think Os uh, Osama Young is also yes. out there. Yeah, Osama there. Young playing at the corner. Freeman gets time, and the pass intended for Brian. Brian slipped. He stumbled a little bit, and Malcolm Jenkins was there covering. Jenkins, the 14th pick overall in the draft, has played well. Well, and he he can play him tough because he knows he's got this guy behind him. You see Sharper over the top. That says that that. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins can play him tough play from a trail position knowing he's got Sharper's help coming over the top but Antonio Bryant that's twice in this game we've seen him slip on timing routes clearly Sam his inability to practice uh, the last several weeks he did practice some this week with his knee injury has not been a good thing third and ten for the Bucks three wide receivers everybody out Freeman has time and the pass incomplete try to lead Sammy Strauder broken up by the middle linebacker Jonathan Vilma Freeman four for twelve he's struggling right now well, and they chose not to bring pressure that time he had a lot of time look how much better he is out of the shotgun than under center that would a contrast 60 percent completion percentage and a 105 rating versus being under center 28 percent completion and a QB rating under 19 I know he Whoa. talked to you on your radio show during the week about being able to see the field. Well, he did a lot of that in college, Sam. A lot of these college kids now are playing a lot out of the gun. Henderson trying to belly back on the return is swarmed under at the 36-yard line, making the 37. That punt into the wind by Dirk Johnson. Well, now you know why they haven't blitzed, blitzed Drew Brees today, because he breaks the blitz. And he is the second, uh, second least blitz quarterback in all of pro football behind Peyton Manning. And you don't heat guys up like that because they're going to break you down. They're going to find the holes and they're going to bust your blitz. Tampa has not blitzed him one time in this football game. They have stayed with a three or a four man rush. Well, they have gotten some pressure yeah, from, from the hits ends. on them. From the ends. Jimmy Wilkerson and Greg White have had a couple of good hits. Empty backfield. One timeout remaining for the Saints. The pass short to Colston. And a good. Pick up after the catch. The ball popped loose, but the official says it's down at the Bucks 47 yard line. A first down. Barrett Rude with the tackle on Marcus Colson. A pickup of 16 on the play. Hurry up offense for the Saints. Tampa was horrible in this situation last year. The hurt, or last week, excuse me, playing hurry up on defense. Brees in trouble, throws, trying to get it to Shockey as he was hit by Styles White. Another good pressure by Styles White. Zach Streif is out there in front of Jermon Bushrod at left tackle today, and he's out there because he handles power better than Jermon Bushrod does, who has been out there playing for Jamal Brown most of the season. And Greg White has done a good job so far on Zach Streif using his power and using his speed to get to the quarterback. Yeah, Thomas splits out wide on second and ten. Everybody out. Breeze throws for Colston. A perfect pass. He took a big hit from Tenor Jackson. And he's down at the 26-yard line. Beautiful pass thrown by Breeze. What a great throw. What a great throw. Look at the poise of Drew Brees as this thing's clicking down. He's just out there playing football. Picked up 21. Everybody out again. Brees steps up and hits Colston again. He bounces off and gets down to the six-yard line. Oh, Marcus Colston. They've got one timeout remaining, and they've used it. 
That's it. All the timeouts are done. 20 yard pickup as Breeze went to Colston three times on that drive. Well, good to see Colston back involved. Only targeted two times in their game last week against the Rams. And when he lines up in the slot at every bit of 6-5, he is a major, major matchup problem. Late in the half last week in Miami. This was a big controversial play. Pass to Michael Clayton. Originally ruled an interception, but on Booth Review, it came out originally, it was an incompletion. It came out an interception as it was ruled that Michael Clayton was in the air, that both feet weren't down when he was hit. When he went to the ground, the ball popped up, and Jason Taylor caught it for an interception. Yeah, and Raheem's a little lighter in the pocketbook yes. because of that tirade on the sidelines, fine $20,000 this week. Right here, the Saints threatening. 35 seconds remaining in the half. Three wide receivers in. Breeze still has it. He throws. Touchdown! Robert Beecham. He had about an inch of room, maybe two. What a beautiful throw. Perfect pass from Breeze to Beecham for the touchdown. Sam, you can't make a better throw than that off the run. Because I'll say this, Tenard Jackson was in great coverage, 36. Look at Breeze set his feet, and just the ball location is so precise and perfect. Here comes the crossing route. Watch Tenard Jackson, 36, is all over him. Look at that coverage. And not only does he squeeze it in front of Tenard, but also in between another defender as well. That was awesome. Two catches in the game for Robert Meacham, both touchdowns. He has 16 receptions this season, six touchdowns. The extra point is good. A 63-yard drive in five plays took up a minute and 10 seconds. And that's the situation I was talking about with the Bucks defense. It was the same story last week at the end of the game. They couldn't protect the lead. They couldn't walk away with the win. We saw it once again playing against the hurry-up offense. They failed right before half as Drew got it into the end zone for a touchdown. Boy, Breeze got into a rhythm hitting Colston. And then the touchdown to Beecham for Robert Beecham, his first career two touchdown game. So funny. I'm sitting up here, and from our vantage point, I'm watching the play, and I see the rolled out. And typically, when a quarterback rolls, you know he's got a crossing route coming from the backside. So my eyes immediately went to Tenard Jackson, the guys in the middle of the field. I said, no way. He's got him covered up. They're not going there. Next thing you know, Drew slices it and you right in there with a beautiful, beautiful throw. You see the confidence that Drew Brees has knowing that he can hit his man. He got a little separation, just the smallest amount, and he fit it in. And the thing with Drew, and I think all the great ones, is he visualizes that stuff all during the week. He's already seen that play in his mind's eye probably 15 times during the course of the week, playing the game and the situations over and over again in his head. So then when they present himself, present themselves, He's ready to pounce on it and execute. Saints fell behind 7-0. They've had the last three scores of the game. Morstead kicks it off. Clifton Smith from the two. Some nice moves, and he's brought down at the 28. The ball popped loose, and a scramble on. Roy Evans made the tackle on Clifton Smith. They're still fighting for the ball down at the bottom of the pile. And there are a lot of players on the field right now. As the special teams units are out there, and the offense and defensive units are out there. And Walt Coleman gets everybody settled down. These division rivalry games are something. Since these two teams became division rivals in 2002, they are 7-7 seven and seven against each other, and 11 of the 14 games have been decided by seven points or fewer. The Bucks from the 28-yard line, 21 seconds remaining in the first half. No timeouts left for the Bucks. Last five times they've had the ball, four punts and an interception, and the four punts have come on three and out. Eric Ward in the backfield with Josh Freeman. Yeah, it, it throw something short. I don't put anything up against his defense. He does throw short. Yeah. Doma with a tackle on Kellen Winslow. Don't forget the Visa halftime report is coming up with the guys in the studio. 
Kurt Terry Howie Michael and Jimmy they'll have all the scores and highlights from around the league the Fox Sports ticker will get you up to date on your fantasy team let you know what everybody's doing so stay tuned for the visa halftime report some concern on the face of Raheem Morris the one thing he knows is that his young quarterback has been able to lead comebacks the last two weeks and what did Raheem tell us on Friday his two main ambitions in his job description make number five look great and lead men and you talk to his players it's pretty amazing and I know Roz got thick skin Raheem and all that stuff these guys are 100 percent behind their coach Kelvin Winslow told us the other day he's everything you could ever want want in a coach and more pressure and they got him Freeman is sacked Lee Torrance got there first and then he was finished off and we've reached the end of the first half the Bucks will get the ball to start the second half the Saints saw the Bucks take the lead but the Saints lead at halftime 17 to 7 we'll be back in Tampa right after this. This is not the weather channel but it is an update on the weather in the Tampa area welcome back to Fox NFL Sunday a line of thunderstorms heading this way so weather could be a problem in the second half overcast skies here now the biggest problem for the Bucks is to get their offense going well a couple things I think that the New Orleans has done a good job of changing things up starting to attack the protections and they've gotten after Josh Freeman certainly they did in the second quarter and I think Josh Freeman to Kellen Winslow has been something we did not see a big part of in the first half of this game Kellen the number one receiver the number one targeted guy two catches early in the game for 13 yards but since New Orleans has done a real fine job of covering him up taking away the best weapon for the rookie the blocks there's a flag back at the 18 yard line it's like they'll bring it back a good tackle by the Saints up at the 23 yard line once again players get up a little heated I think they're going to get Roy Roy uh, Miller with a block in the back 93 the big defensive tackle got his feet stuck in the in the grass and the defender was running by him and just Illegal pushed him in the, in the back, back. On the return team, 10 yard penalty. First down. Walt didn't identify him as you did, but check it out. Well, it's hard for a big guy to get in a stationary position and take on a linebacker that's running and try to stay with him. Yeah. He was beat from the start there as Marvin Mitchell got by him. And easy call there for the head linesman. First possession, 12 plays, 95 yards, touchdown drive, and since then, 21 plays, 29 yards, four punts and an interception. Can you say the Greg Williams factor? Yeah, the defensive coordinator. Buck start from the nine yard line. Off the play fake, Freeman gets time. Outside, Ernest Graham. Trying to cut back in, Malcolm Jenkins with a good tackle. The pick up to the 14 yard line take a look at some of the numbers in the first half as the Saints picked it up especially the passing game with 154 yards passing time of possession pretty close the running game for the Bucks was mostly early and then the Saints tightened up defensively well the third down conversions defensively have been good stuff for, for the Buccaneers. Second and five. Stinger New York. Stinger New York. Tokyo. Tokyo. What is that? Freeman checked off. Cadillac Williams carries. And a good play up front by Will Smith. Boy, there is some hitting going on in the inside up there. Oh. This will bring up a third and one for the Bucks. Bucks didn't know how far Cadillac Williams would come back. That's one, one of the reasons they brought in Derek Ward. They had Ernest Graham. Now Graham's been relegated to a fullback well, because, position. Because because of the comeback of Carnell right. Williams, you said it. Uh, the expectations, no way, were anywhere close uh, to what they are in terms of what he's providing for him for Cadillac. Chris Presley, first NFL game, is in a fullback. Cadillac carries, tripped up, dives for a first down. Good effort by Cadillac Williams. Good block by the rookie out of Wisconsin, Chris Presley. McDonald Penn, the left tackle. That's a great story, Carnell Williams. You think about his injuries. The first knee injury he had a few years ago 
Sam, they were talking about that being a career ender. A lot of guys don't come back from what Cadillac Williams had with that first knee injury. It was catastrophic. Then had another one. And able to come back from both of those. Just a true testament of what that guy's got inside of his heart. Two tight ends in, Winslow and Stevens. Stevens splits out out of the shotgun. Freeman for Stevens. Pushed out of bounds by Lee Torrance. And Torrance looked like he hurt his wrist as he shoved Stevens out of bounds. He hurt his hand or his wrist. He's still down. And another injury in the secondary for the Saints. Maybe a shoulder. Yeah, he is Maybe in he tremendous pain. He there. is in tremendous pain, and they're working on the shoulder. You can see that. Holy cow. Seemed like an innocent play here. Well, he's going to extend his arm. Right now, oh, you could see he couldn't even extend his shoulder. Right when the play, right when he made contact with Jeremy Stevens, that's where the shoulder had an issue because you could see he couldn't even extend his left arm as he tried to push Stevens out of bounds. And that's going to that's going to stress the holy heck out of him when you think about their secondary already being Nick being down two starters coming into this game. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. By Visa. Visa debit is easier than cash. More people go with Visa. And by Cadillac. From our family to yours, season's best from Cadillac. Back in Tampa, where the New Orleans Saints have concerns in the secondary. Lee Torrance going off to the locker room. Check out his left arm or left shoulder. Usama Young has come in to replace him at left corner. Young, who plays safety and corner, is in. Randall Gay not playing a lot. Sammy Strader in as a third wide receiver on second and five. The blitz coming, and they got him. The ball was popped loose. Is it a fumble? I think it's ruled a fumble and it's recovered by the Saints. Scott Fujita blitzing from the outside got to Josh Freeman. Well, you can hear him call for the edge and nobody blocks Fujita. Carnell Williams completely whipped on him. Carnell taking a handoff, a play fake, does not get over there soon enough. You got Fujita coming scot free, rushing off the edge. And again, there's the ball security issues for Josh Freeman whenever he's trying to scramble. And Greg Williams talked about it, his mechanics with ball security terrible when he's in danger and Fujita pops it out. And another takeaway by the Saints. Third sack of the game, the second takeaway. Here Thomas on the carry, picks up a couple on the play. Barrett Rude on the stop. Tackled by Barrett Rude. And that's just all protection, and that's Greg Williams attacking the protection. And, and you could hear Jeff Fain declaring the protection, and you got the guy out there on the side, and Carnell Williams just really, really late in his recognition and missed it. Now Tampa with this sudden change defensively. They have absolutely got to have a stop here, Sam, and hold him to a field goal to stop the momentum surge. Two tight ends in, Shockey and Thomas. Screen pass, Pierre Thomas picked up one block in it. Good tackle by Akeem Talib. Takes down Pierre Thomas at the 11 yard line. A very good tackle because it looks like there's going to be a little running room. Good one is able to get Geno Hayes blocked. You see it right there. Talib coming off a block. Just puts his shoulder pad right through the waistband to Pierre Thomas. So here's a big third down play. Everybody out, Breeze throws to Thomas, touchdown, David Thomas, the tight end. Third touchdown pass of the game for Drew Breeze, 22 on the season. And the New Orleans Saints, who lead the NFL with 27 turnovers, take the ball away on the fumble recovery and cash in with a touchdown pass to David Thomas, his first Touchdown catch of the season. Great play call and even better execution. We'll show it to you in a second how they dialed it up, but really good stuff. And the extra point is 
is good. 19 <laughs> consecutive games that the New Orleans Saints have scored at least 20 points. There's a flag down. One tight end congratulating the other. I told you you'd see him in a lot of different alli uh, alignments today, David Thomas. 12 men on the defense. That five yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Extra point is good. That shouldn't happen. But the Saints cash in. They get the turnover, and Drew Brees finds David Thomas. Boy, he's using all his weapons. Sam, watch how they stretch the triangle. There's this triangle right there, but it's a crossing route that's going to pull Barrett Root inside. Corner route there, and then David Thomas all by himself. Rondé Barber got stretched to the outside out of the triangle because, triangle because of the Colston route. Barrett Root to the inside because of the drive route. And then you saw David Thomas wide open in the in the scene for the touchdown. With the help of a little wind, Morstead's kick is nine yards deep, and it's a touchback. Drew Brees has hit eight different receivers in the game. That one was Thomas. Let's check out our interactive fan poll. If you needed a quarterback to win it all, who would you pick? Active quarterback? Well, the Saints fans have been impressed with Drew Brees because they have logged on, and right now he's got 52%. They're all voting with their heart. Come on, are you kidding me? Look at those top three guys, all from the Gulf Coast region. <laughs> Can't argue with any of them. No. Josh Freeman to Cadillac Williams out of the backfield up to the 24-yard line. What's happened over the last four seasons is Drew Brees coming to New Orleans has just blossomed with the help of Sean Payton, a great offensive mind as the head coach, and they have worked very, very well together. And Brees has become one of the elite quarterbacks in the game. And they've had continuity, and I don't think you can say enough about the continuity. Those guys being together since 06, and now Sean last year getting the extension. It's good. Cadillac Williams again. Good hard run. He's just short of the first down, half a yard short. Good blocking up front by the offensive line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll tell you they need to get involved, I think, is right there, number 85, Maurice Stovall. They need to figure out if that guy can play or not. He is a physical, physical specimen. He's got a good timing thing going with Josh Freeman because they played so much of the scout team together over the, the summer and into training camp. Had a 33-yard touchdown last week. They got to get 85 involved in this passing game. No catches in the game. Stoball is down. Hand off inside and stopped. But a second effort got the first down. Ernest Graham was stopped short of the line of scrimmage. He kept on driving, got across the 30, and got the first down. He is his own best blocker. A little fullback dive right here. Will Smith just stones him in the hole, but doesn't wrap up. And as soon as he doesn't wrap, the little pinball wizard, Ernest Graham, has the ability to stay on his feet and get the first down. Changes up front for the Saints. And the Bucks finally get a first down, the first one they've gotten in quite some time. Sammy Strawder and Maurice Stovall, the wide receivers. Stovall motions. Freeman started a run, slips away. He's tough to bring down. Good run as he slides, crossing the 45. He's got the big body and he is elusive and strong and tough to bring down on first contact. Yeah, and man under, he had everybody running out man coverage. You see right there, there's the man, so he knows it's man. And then he's gonna shake down Anthony Hargrove. He steps up, well, there's Hargrove. Puts the brakes on, able to spin out of it. Very noble for a guy that's 260 pounds. And, and I'm telling you, the more you watch him, he's not even close at the caliber of Donovan McNabb, but as a runner and a scrambler, he's that type of player. Two runs, each 15 yards for Josh Freeman. Has time and finds Graham out of the backfield. Across midfield. Time to update what's happening in New York with the Giants and the Falcons. Here's Kurt. And the Giants beginning to get a little bit of separation. Here's Brandon Jacobs on a two-yard run, and now, with less than four minutes to go in the third quarter, the Giants have a 10-point lead over Atlanta. Sam and Tim. Thanks, Kurt. Nice little souvenir tossed into the crowd. Dallas and Washington playing today. And right now, Washington's leading 3-0 middle of the third quarter in Dallas. Two tight ends in. 
them some pressure. On second down. Short drop. The blitz coming and the pass too high for John Gilmore. Darren Sharper all over him. Late blitz from Jonathan Vilma. Darren Sharper, who is. He's played the best football, he, Sam. He's been terrific. I haven't seen him play as good as he's playing in New Orleans in three or four years. Back to it's still a good player, but the way he's playing and the range that he's playing with this year and the seven picks and the three touchdowns, Greg Williams' scheme has been perfect for Darren Sharp. And some people thought he was washed up after his four years in Minnesota, but he has had a terrific season. Seven interceptions, second in the league. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Three wide receivers. Winslow splits out. Some confusion and a timeout is called by the Bucks, who trail the Saints 24 to 7. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the GMC Sierra, the official vehicle of the NFL. There was some confusion on this play before the timeout. Yeah, you could see all three of the guys over there. Strader, Clayton, and Clayton looked like he lined up on the wrong side. And then Freeman looking at the play cop wisely called a timeout so they could get it right on a big third down. Third and five. Third and right, third and right. Freeman sends everybody out, throws too high for Clayton, and it was intercepted by Jonathan Vilma. Another pick. Second of the game, third takeaway of the game by the Saints who lead the NFL with 28 and lead the league with 19 interceptions. Well, he had Kellen Winslow so wide open on a crossing route, it's not even funny. Look at Winslow. There is nobody, nobody around it's Kellen Winslow. 25. Josh Freeman tries to force it in between three defenders to the middle of the field, and Vilma comes up with it. You would classify that as a rookie mistake? He, absolutely. Yeah. It's been one of those days for Josh Freeman. Mike Bell is back in. He banged up earlier, but he's okay. Off the plate fake, Breeze decides to dump it off and throws too high for David Thomas. Good pressure that time by the Bucks. It's been quite a year for the Saints, to say the least. Offensively, we know. Well, Defensively, the improvement has been significant. For and when you're the number one offense in pro football, and historically since Drew's been there, they've been in the top five almost every year. But if you can continue to get those turnovers on defense and Give the ball back to your offense an extra two or three times per game in the caliber of offense like Drew Brees. Big reason, Sam, why they're undefeated. Darnell Dinkins in the tight end motions. Pierre Thomas carries. Good hole, breaks a tackle. Good run by Pierre Thomas. Down inside the 40 at the 37 yard line. Savvy Piscatelli, the safety, made the stop 18 yard run for Pierre Thomas. Very good block by Robert Meacham, and then they got caught in a slant. You're going to see the guy slant here, which means Root over the top. Rondé's the one that gets blocked by Robert Meacham. See, Barrett Root tried to run the alley. Rondé gets blocked just enough, which made the crease. And you see what type of runner Pierre Thomas is. And he gets his shoulders facing downhill. He's got a lot of heat. Two tight ends in. Nice cutback by Mike Bell. Another big gainer. And once again, Piscatelli has to make the tackle. Bell holding on to the ball is a flag on the play. Maybe on Bell for unsportsmanlike conduct. I think he came out of the pile trash talking. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, 21 offense, 15-yard penalty, oh. first and 10. No. 28-yard run. By Mike Bell was a real good one. The penalty, not a good one at all. Bell goes off, and Pierre Thomas comes on. Five defensive backs in for the Bucks. It's a first down, first and ten for the Saints. Just inside the 25 yard line. Like five one. Ready. Three wide receivers left. Breeze looks, throws outside of Colston, and out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Now the market at the 16. 
working against Rondé Barber. And he's just got tight end skill in the slot when you look at Colson because he's such a big body. He's hard to stop when Rondé Barber's playing inside leverage on him. Rondé's in here. He's just going to come and pivot right to the outside. They're going to run the other guys off. You see Colston just pivots and goes right back to the outside. Rondé has no chance to get out to that quick flat route. Marcus Colston in his fourth year had injury problems last year after a 98 catch season the year before. Mike Bell, there's a big hole. Bell inside the five to the three yard line. The Saints go to the ground. And Bell gets up and says, okay, keep it quiet. 13 yard run. He had a 28 yard run earlier. Big block from David Thomas. Hurry up offense. Bell again to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. That was impressive running by Mike Bell. Seventeenth rushing touchdown of the season for the New Orleans Saints. Third for Mike Bell. And now the Saints. Well, now they're just blowing forcing, it open. Yeah, they're forcing their will at the line now. of scrimmage. Now you're starting to see the physicality of that offensive line in New Orleans shine. Ran the same play three times in a row and got great push on all of them. Seventh time this season they've scored. 30 or more points. It's 31 now. New Orleans Saints, 17 points off of turnovers. Mike Bell, 28 yard run. Then a 13, and then to the goal line for a touchdown. We've raved about the Saints offense. Their defense has done a great job taking the ball away. Special teams are very good as well. Pearson Prelo throughout his career has been an excellent special teams man. Saw Marvin Mitchell and Courtney Roby. Roby's speed gets him down there in a hurry. And the strong leg of Thomas Morstead. Back to Clifton Smith, seven yards deep, and he takes a knee for a touchback. The Saints dominating things. Mike Bell scoring the touchdown gets a little oxygen along the sideline. The Saints with a 31 to 7 lead three takeaways two interceptions and a fumble and they've turned them into 17 been points. able to capitalize and then on the other side Tampa hasn't been able to do that. You talk about getting support. Uh, look at what's happened with them three giveaways. They've lost two challenges. Those came early. Drew Brees has been ripping it up yards per play 6.7 but Raheem knew he was going to need help from the special teams he was going to need support from his defense with interceptions and turnovers to help out the young quarterback none of that has happened today and like Williams and Derek Ward in the backfield with Josh Freeman Freeman gets time throws short to Kellen Winslow his third catch of the game it's been all short stuff up to the 26 yard line Scott Shanley with the tackle big holiday my favorite Thanksgiving Day, a lot of people's favorite. Great food, family together, and we've got football for you. The Packers and the Lions, great traditional rivals. On Thanksgiving Day, it all begins with a pregame show at 11:30 Eastern. The Lions were down 24 to a barn burner, baby. Cleveland today, they're ahead 31-27. The Packers are leading San Francisco 23 to 10. Freeman under pressure through low, but a good catch. By Antonio Bryant, who's taken down by Lee Torrance. And he's Torrance, back. Who was just back. Now he goes off. He's hurting again. Yeah, he re-aggravated his shoulder, chopping down Antonio Bryant. You could see it immediately when he went down on his shoulder. Lee Torrance popped up and headed right for the sideline. Well, he tried to gut it out and came back in the game. And that is Holvan, Chris Holvan down on the field. No, that's Jeremy Trueblood, excuse me. The right tackle is hurt and that well, would look like Remy Adele just fell on him Sam you know, Jeremy Trueblood was blocking out on the edge. I think Remy Adele who was running around Davin Joseph just came down and fell on the side of his leg. Here's Lee Torrance as he chops down Bryant immediately left shoulder you see that he knows right away that that yeah. wing is re injured again and then here's Trueblood right here. I think it's 92 Adele right here it falls on him. True Blood goes down with Charleston, then Remy Adele right there falls on him, and that's where you saw True Blood reach oh, for yeah. his right leg. 
And he's limping off. That's not a good sign at all. True blood limping off. He's replaced by the rookie out of Southern Mississippi, DeMar Dotson, number 69, 6'9, 315. This is where you worry about your young quarterback. You got backup O lineman out there now at right tackle, and you got Greg Williams, who's dialing up defenses to get after your cue. First down from the 39. Freeman pressure. He was hit as he threw as he threw incomplete Charles Grant with good pressure and the hit on Josh Freeman. And Greg has turned up the heat. Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator. There was a six-man blitz and their man coverage all over the place. Now Freeman told us on Friday that when they bring that heat, there's plays to be had. There's holes in that defense, but the problem is, and as Greg knows, either you're gonna get there and get a sack or you're gonna make them get the ball out quick. So far the ball's been coming out quick. And there's been no receiver around him. Three wide receivers and Winslow splits out as well. Freeman gets time and completes this one to Kellen Winslow for the 45. Let's check out what's happening on. To, let's go to Kurt. Well, Cleveland once led Detroit 24 to three, but here Matthew Stafford hooked up with the ex-buck, Will Heller. And they've come all the way back to take the lead, have the Lions. 31 27. They're in the third quarter. Sam and Tim, Stafford, and Brady Quinn have combined to throw seven touchdown passes, and they're still in the third quarter, Mike. Well, oh, that's what they pay those quarterbacks to do, Kurt. Good job. Thank you, Kurt. Big comeback by the Lions. There's third and four. Freeman. I threw into a crowd and almost got it picked off again. A couple of bad decisions by the youngster today. Broken up by Jenkins. And they've led to turnovers. And that time the pass was knocked away incomplete. Yeah, I think Greg Williams has got him confused, and they're overthinking it right now. Well, we can see they're not in any comfort level whatsoever in the passing game. 249, please. I'm gonna put time on the change the time on the clock they got three he's got three completions today to his wide receivers Josh Freeman mm -hmm. Bryant yeah, with a couple yep Bryant with a couple and Clayton's got one and Winslow's got four catches but averaging six yards per catch fifth punt of the game for Dirk Johnson Darren Sharper is back deep takes it at the 12. Trying to get outside, good coverage on the play, led by Tory Cox, number 27. Well, we talked about earlier what Greg Williams has done against young quarterbacks. He faced Matthew Stafford in the Lions opening day, and you saw three interceptions there. And then uh, against Mark Sanchez and the Jets, three interceptions. And today, so he's two He's actually doing pretty good. He's got a 32 rating. The other guys were at 27. The beauty of what Greg's doing today, and, and you see there, is he's had a lot of success against the. He's got so many packages at the young QBs, it makes them hard to handle. But I think the fact that he's down two starting corners today, we've seen Lee Torrance get nicked a couple of times, and they're still able to put up those kind of numbers and defend like that. Very impressive. Bell and Echo in the backfield. I like the fullback. As the Saints start from their 18. Mike Bell was hit by Hovan, falls forward to the 21 yard line. This is the last possession and drive led by Mike Bell's running. That was a 28 yard run. It was a great block by John Stinchcomb. It really was the whole right side of the offensive line. Same thing here. Look at 78, Stinchcomb walling off the side. And then the touchdown, they get a great block from Carl Nix who pulls around and Mike Bell second effort is able to spin it into the end zone for six. And let's throw David Thomas in there with a couple of good blocks good point. from the tight end position. Excellent blocking by the Saints. And his cut back by Bell. He was hit by Savvy Piscatelli and Quincy Black. Brought down at the 23 yard line. And talking about Stinchcomb who had a couple of real key blocks on that last drive that, that we showed you. He's been a terrific second round pick. Mickey Loomis drafted him in the second round. He had an opportunity to leave in free agency. He said he came back to New Orleans because he felt the loyalty of the team that drafted him and, and knows that this is a tight group. And knows that they're going to be together for a while. That offensive line 
every Thursday night. They all go out to dinner. They take the quarterbacks with them. Uh, there's no question that, uh, and they make yeah, they make the QBs pay most of the time. No question. Very tight group, chemistry wise. Breeze throws, completes the Shockey for a first down. Denard Jackson brings him down. Shockey up to the 36 yard line. Gets up with a little bit of a limp. 12 yard gain on the play and a first down for the Saints. There's a good example right there of why you don't blitz Drew, Ble Drew Brees. And I, I believe that may have been the first blitz of the day. And Drew busted it right on his back step. Knowing he's got man coverage, knowing he's got Shockey. Tenard Jackson crossing route, he's going to exploit it. Boom, right there. You talked about the quarterbacks paying for the dinner. She got Drew Brees and Mark Brunel. Those guys have made a lot of money. <laughs> oh, Paul and a big run by Pierre Thomas. Rondé Barber riding his back, and Thomas went for an extra seven yards with a defensive back on his back. Great run by Pierre Thomas. 24 yards. Remember when I talked about this guy right here, Carl Nix in the open? Watch this block on Roy Miller. Swallows him up. No chance for 93 Roy Miller to get off that block into shed because Carl Nix is such a big mauler at 345 pounds. Another thing with that guy is he is rarely on the ground. Tremendous athlete for a man his size. Officially 23 yard run for Pierre Thomas into the third quarter. Saints lead 31 to 7. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan here in Tampa. As it has been a big day for the visiting team. And the clouds, though they've been dark and ominous. Nothing has come down as far as precipitation. We start the fourth quarter. And the Saints trying to go 10 and 0. Hand off inside to Pierre to Mike Bell. Balance attack now. The Saints have gone to the running game. Once they opened up the lead, they've gone back to the ground game. 316 yards total offense for the Saints. They've rushed for 135 and passed for 187. Now a total of 322. Yeah, look at 7.6 yards per attempt speaks for itself. This group right here, if they continue on the trend that they're on, they'll be the best rushing team yards per carry in New Orleans ever. Only team in the NFL in the top five in both rushing and passing. Breeze threw it behind Darnell Dinkins, the third tight end. And here's what makes them so good and really so hard to defend. They got a lot of sister plays in their offense. Barrett Root told us on Friday all about them and how they make them look. Here's an example. You see the zone run play there. You see the zone uh, run look here and it ends up being a reverse. All the same backfield action. Same thing on the next play. You got that same look in the backfield. The zone run now it ends up being a bootleg. And Drew Brees is able to hit Shockey. They run a lot of plays. Sam they line up formation and personnel wise. It all looks the same. And then you got different plays. A lot of sleight of hand and what they do offensively. Tough to defend. Third and four for the Saints. Pierre Thomas. Stinchcomb with a good block. Thomas with a good run. Down to the 27 on the first down. Pierre Thomas. A solid game, if not spectacular. They just. Continue to grind it out. 10 carries, 74 yards for Pierre Thomas. Mike Bell, 8 carries, 66 yards. The beauty of it is there's no Reggie Bush out there today, yeah. and they're still dominating. Really, as they've gotten since the first quarter, they've done just about anything they've wanted to offensively, run or pass. Anderson motions, eighth play of this drive. Straight ahead, Mike Bell, a couple of yards down to the 26 yard line. The leading scoring team in the NFL. They put up 31 today. There's the look at what the offensive line has done. That that <laughs> seven and a half Pretty yards incredible number. per run. Time of possession, 22 minutes. And think about this: 4.7 coming into the game today. 4.7 yards per carry on every rush. If that holds up throughout the year, uh, Sam, they'll be the best rushing team in Saints history in yards per carry. That's a big thing. Dinkins and Thomas, two tight ends. The carry by Mike Bell and a short pickup. Rondé Barber and Barrett Rude combining on the tackle. 
the third down for the Saints. What an impressive game for the Saints who emphasized ball security. They were really concerned over the last four games that turnovers had crept in and mistakes had crept in and all week they did drills on protecting the ball. Well Sean Payton said we had to do more than just talk about it. We got to work on it. We can always make it a point of emphasis and we can talk about ball security. It's so many different stations set up at practice this week guys ripping it out guys diving on the ground really to eliminate those plays. Draw play Pierre Thomas straight ahead he goes through Thomas still going and he is brought down wrestled down by a keep to leave at the six yard line. Just a simple straight ahead run good blocking up front and an 18 yard gain for Pierre Thomas and a very good block by Jonathan Goodwin the center and then Pierre Thomas when he's going downhill he possesses a lot more power than you think. There's just no way you're tackling him with an arm tackle. There's good one. Let's watch his block. He got some blitz and some action coming this way. Oh, he's able to block Barrett Rude. David Thomas gets a very good block on Tenard Jackson. And then there you see the power by Pierre Thomas. An arm tackle. If you don't have your head and body in front of him when you try to wrap him up, he's going to run right through your arms. Mike Bell in. David Thomas blocking. Bell straight ahead. It's inside the five yard line, close to the four. The only other undefeated team in the NFL the Indianapolis Colts are in a tough battle in Baltimore. They just kicked a field goal and they lead Baltimore 17 to 15 with seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. There's another team that's doing it with injuries on defense. Yes they got some similarities to this New Orleans team where they're playing with backup corners out there defensively the Indianapolis Colts. Looks like Drew Brees is going to call a timeout. Goes to Walt Coleman, lets the play clock wind down and calls a timeout. It's second and goal for the Saints with a big lead already. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Windows 7, your PC simplified by Bud Light. With the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. And by Autotrader.com. Now size up the best deals on new cars at Autotrader.com. Are those Bucks fans or are they from the French Quarter in New Orleans? What'd you have to do to get those beats? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Saints fans, they've got a lot to cheer about. Team looking to go 10 and 0. Trio, trio, trio. Bell and Eckel in the backfield on second and goal. his way close to the goal line. He hit Tenard Jackson and bounced off and got inside the one yard line. Jimmy Wilkerson was able to stop him from getting in. Good he just runs run. mad. <laughs> Mike Bell, it's like he's always in a bad mood the way he runs. It's awesome to see. And he dives over the top for the touchdown. The blocking up front another Solid drive by the Saints, and Mike Bell finishes it off with his second touchdown of the game. 18 rushing touchdowns on the season for the New Orleans Saints. It's been a big play for him in the second half, and just having Stinchcomb and Jari Evans wash down the right side, bring Carl Nix and that big 345 pound body from the left side, and clear it out for Mike Bell. Mike Bell 75 yards rushing. Pierre Thomas 92. 13 play drive, 82 yards. They ate up 7 minutes 26 seconds. And the Saints with a huge 38 to 7 lead. There's a big man leading the blocking up front. And a very good player. And you see his round. Year two is a fifth round pick watch his feet watch 77's feet and how incredible this is for a guy his size Look how nimble he is wide base never crosses his feet he's able to side shuffle then get up into the hole and then explode take two guys out wow that was a great pick for Mickey Loomis in the fifth round and since he got out there last year for Jamar Nesbitt he hasn't looked back Morstead strong leg this time he goes the other way I thought it was the wind earlier he's got the strong leg he put it right through the end zone 
for a touchback. It's all New Orleans Saints. The unbeaten Saints at 9 and 0 have a 38 to 7 lead. Today's game is sponsored by Sprint. This is the NFL Now, only from Sprint, the Now Network, official wireless service sponsor of the NFL. Three of the last four NFC teams to start a season 9 and 0 went on to win the Super Bowl. The Bears in 85, the Giants in 1990, the Redskins in 91. And the Saints about to go 10 and 0. Freeman hits Derek Ward out of the backfield. He steps out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First possession of the game. They got the ball the five yard line. 95 yard drive including a sack. They took a sack and still scored. But since then only 88 yards on 38 plays. Greg Williams again the adjustments. The guys are executing perfectly defensively. 2.2 yards per play since the first quarter. Amazing. And off inside to Derek Ward. Good run. First down. Up to the 35. Let's see what's happening with Pittsburgh and Kansas City. And go to Kurt Benefit. Jamal Charles took the opening kickoff 97 yards for a score. And then he takes this one to end a 91-yard drive. And Kansas City giving the Steelers all they can handle. Tied at 24 in the fourth quarter. Dick and Charles. Oh, that's a great Oh, great game, thanks. Kurt, long pass by Freeman. Overthrown for Michael Clayton. There's a flag on the play. Osama Young was covering, but he may have held. Yeah, they're going to get Osama Young for sure. Whether or not the ball was in the air will dictate whether it was P.I. and it was. Defensive pass interference. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And the spot of the foul is the Saints 45-yard line. And I'm surprised because with backup corners and Usama Young who's played mostly safety this year out there playing corner now that Tampa has not taken more shots down the field. And the reason I say that is, is Josh Freeman's got a big arm and the chances of this league especially with backups are getting a pass interference are pretty good. That's the first shot they've taken. There's Freeman's pass and it's complete to Antonio Bryant for the 39 yard line. I will say this. Him and watching him, we did the game against Green Bay, his first NFL start. We watched him in practice. I think he needs work on the long ball and the timing. I, you know, some guys have got it right away. I think he needs a little work on the long throw. Pressure from outside, short pass is complete to Kellen Winslow, and he's right at the first down line. They give him forward progress to the 35 yard line. Sam, I agree with you on the deep ball, but I mean, why not take chances? You got Antonio Bryant back, you got backup corners, and you got a chance to get a pass interference call, which in this league is a huge play. It is a first down with a no huddle offense. Freeman feels pressure, throws, almost intercepted. Threw it behind Kellen Winslow, Chris Reese. Backup safety had the ball hit him in the numbers and he dropped it. Turnovers. That was Josh Freeman. The pass intercepted by Malcolm Jenkins. And there's the ball knocked out of his hands. A fumble recovered by the Saints. And then this pass turned into an interception by Jonathan Vilma. And the Saints turned the three turnovers into 17 points. Now he's pretty careless with the ball, that's for sure. He's got a lot of moxie now. He'll try to slide it in there. He's got thick skin, but Greg Williams talked about that. The guy will take a lot of chances. Everybody out. Short pass complete to Derek Ward. Osama Young on the tackle. And Ward out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Look where he's gone with the ball. Wide receivers, four completions to his wide receivers, six to the tight ends, five to the running backs. This is the number that you want going that way. Especially when you got backup corners out there on the field. He's only thrown for 122 yards in this game today. Go, go. Longest Make pass, 21 yeah. yards to Antonio Bryant. There's third and six. What is that? Everybody out. Freeman throws short to Derek Ward. And the Saints are there to bring him down at the 27 yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down. And no doubt the Bucks will go for it. 
I think Josh Freeman, and, and, and like a lot of young quarterbacks, he's got his mind made up where he's going with the ball pre snap. And even Greg Williams, the D coordinator, talked a little bit about that yesterday. He said, most young quarterbacks do it. And he goes, I think this guy does it. He knows where he's going with the ball pre snap. And that time, once again, Kellen Winslow was so wide open on a drive route. And Freeman never saw him and checked it down to the running back. Three wide receivers in. Check it out, Sonny. 31, 31. Winslow, the tight end. On fourth down, Freeman throws, and it may have been tipped. And a battle going on. Anthony Hargrove pushing and shoving with Donald Penn. Pearson Prelo involved with Jeff Fain. And for Josh Freeman and the Bucks, not a good day. Watch it to stay tuned right after our game. It's the Fox NFL Sunday postgame show presented by AT&T. We'll reveal the new BCS standings. Check out what happened in college basketball and how they impact the new BCS standings. That's right after the game. And of course, scores and highlights from around the league on the AT&T postgame show. Mark Brunel is in at quarterback. Second time this season he's been in the game as a quarterback. First time was in the Saints win over the Giants October 18th. Let's find out what's happening in Dallas. Here comes Kirk with the update. Redskins leading all day long, but less than three minutes left. Tony Romo escapes, finds Patrick Creighton in the end zone for the first and only touchdown, but it's so far all they need. Dallas leading 7-6, hoping to come back and win it. Sam and Tim. Wow. Thanks, Kurt. Giants are leading their game at home against Atlanta. 31 to 24. Less than two minutes to go. Brunel handing off to Lionel Ham Hamilton. Drew Brees has gone to the sideline after a great day. Yeah, and watch his footwork right here, Drew Brees. I mean, a lot of people would say he may have happy feet. No way. He knows exactly what he's doing. Watch him climb the ladder up in the pocket. Always bouncing up on his toes, standing tall, great posture in the pocket. Mechanically, they do not get much better than Drew Brees, who has had a terrific day, 19 to 29, three touchdown passes. Tim, he's a he's not a big man, six feet tall. How does he see the field so well? Well, he sees the he sees the field in his mind. I, I think he knows where everybody is. He is just so prepared. He visualizes all the routes. He knows where everybody's going in the passing game. You give him a pre-snap read in your coverage, and he knows how to break it. Lionel Hamilton on third down as the Saints keep it on the ground who came up a little bit short. And then I think the other thing we just saw it in the in the package there how he moves around in the pocket. I mean the guy does such a good job of finding the open windows and finding the open throwing lanes just with subtle movement in the pocket to give himself a clearing so he could deliver the ball. Reason the Saints about to go 10 and 0 in Baltimore. Indianapolis is leading Baltimore 17 to 15 with 2:19 to go in the fourth quarter as the Colts try to stay undefeated. And how about a week from tomorrow? The Saints will be home against the New England Patriots. Well, they got to block of games coming up here in the next four that that aren't easy. Now they've had a difficult schedule so far, but. Looking at their next four, New England and New Orleans, and they go to Washington, not an easy place to play. At Atlanta, tough place to play, and then the Cowboys coming down to the Dome. That's a tough four games. But the Saints got through this game despite some key injuries. We talked about the injuries to the cornerbacks. Reggie Bush was injured. That's a key offensive weapon, having a terrific year. But uh, the Saints have put it together. Mark Brunel, 17-year veteran, handing off, and it's a first down. They went for it on fourth and less than a yard and maintained possession. Here's the schedule, the next five games, including another matchup with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That'll be in New Orleans. I think the one thing you could say about them, at least to this point, is they're certainly not, you know, a team that on paper is only undefeated because you look at some of their games, Sam, at Philadelphia, they had the Jets. I think the Jets were undefeated at the time. The Giants. The Giants were undefeated at the time. Oh, that was I a mean, huge played, win for the they've Saints. They've had. They've played some tough teams through the first half of the season. The quarterback Drew Brees talking with the defensive coordinator Greg Williams as they exchange ideas, thoughts, and maybe 
Uh, thanks. Thanks for doing your job and giving me a short field so I could uh, put 17 points on the board. Yeah, probably a lot of that for <laughs> sure. Now, I, I've known Greg for quite a while, and, and I know Greg took less money to, to coach for the New Orleans Saints. He had other opportunities around the NFL, took less money to coordinate for New Orleans. And he told us yesterday, he said he wanted an opportunity to be on the same team with Drew Brees. So when I was in Buffalo, I wanted to draft him so bad, you couldn't believe it. They weren't able to get it done. Now they're on the same field together, and Greg's loving it. And Sean Payton wanted Greg Williams here. That was a big factor for him. Hamilton slept as he got to the 45-yard line and bring up a third down. Time winding down. One thing, you know, we talked about quarterbacks interacting. Drew Brees and Peyton Manning have become friends, and they text each other they exchange ideas in the offseason they I think work the beauty, out together well the beauty of the great ones is there's no ego they check them at the door pride's not going to call um, you know prohibit him from picking up the phone and calling a guy like Peyton Manning they just want to get better and they feed off of each other and I like that he said yes to Greg Olson when Greg Olson asked him to help out Josh Freeman Ready. in the offseason third and four Lionel Hamilton shoved back by Quincy Black and Kyle Moore would work up front by the Bucks. Well, how about the Bucks? This is a setback for them, a big loss to a division rival. I think they were expecting a better effort and uh, a more uh, a closer game, uh, and they didn't get it. Well, where do they, they're, where just do not, they go they're not very here? good. That's all you can say. And they had a great win a couple of weeks ago. They played a lot of teams close. They don't know how to win the big games, um, you know, at the end, and we've seen that from them this year. I just don't think they're very good schematically defensively the way they're running it. I don't think they're built to run the scheme that they're running. And you see it. I mean you see the, the line of scrimmage. You watch that defensive line and really since New Orleans has been dedicated to running the ball they have taken that defensive line for Tampa and have driven them three four five yards off the football. The Saints have called a timeout. It's a fourth and two with two oh four remaining. And it looks like some rain has started to fall here in Tampa. Don't forget Thursday, great day. We wish you all a happy and wonderful Thanksgiving. And we invite you to tune in on Turkey Day to a great football game, the Packers and the Lions. It all begins with a pregame show, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 Pacific Time. Green Bay is leading at home today, 30 to 17 over San Francisco. Detroit is leading Cleveland, 31-29. Six minutes to go in that game in Detroit. So it's a great day, Thanksgiving Day coming up. You'll enjoy the football. The rain has begun falling here in Tampa. It held off for most of the day. And now fourth Ready? down is the Saints. Look to pick up the first down and allow them to run out the clock. But they know Gino Hayes burst in and throws Lionel Hamilton for a loss. The Bucks will get the ball one more time. Two minutes to go in the game. Drew Brees will have another win on his belt. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Your world delivered. Thanks for taking part in our fan interactive poll. Drew Brees is the hot quarterback right now. Everybody loves him. The fans say he'd be their pick if they needed to win it all in one game. Brett Favre's not doing too badly either. He's nine and one. Minnesota won today, 35 to nine, and Indianapolis, 28 seconds to go, leading Baltimore, 17 to 15 in Baltimore. Right here, young Josh Freeman. Getting quite a learning experience. Going deep and it's intercepted by Chris Reese. Reese on the return. And he is spun around and out of bounds. Third interception of the game for the Saints. Their fourth takeaway. They lead the league in interceptions and takeaways. And they have been magnificent this afternoon. Now that was a very easy read for Chris Reese who just stood, sat back in the deep half and watched the quarterback. Josh Freeman released it late. Put a lot of air under it, and Reese was all over it, just playing center field and going and getting the pick. You First. see Freeman a little late throwing the ball, and it's not even close. Yeah. And Reese just side shuffled over and got in front of that for the interception. First career interception for Chris Reese. 
And for the Saints, their 20th interception of the season. He's holding on to that football. He won't <laughs> let that one go. That's a special moment for Chris Reese, a third year man out of Georgia Tech. And now the Saints will run out the clock and go 10 and 0. What a game for the New Orleans Saints. Everything right for Sean Payton and for Tampa Bay and the rookie coach and the rookie quarterback. A tough afternoon. And again, I just think a couple things. Greg Williams schematically, defensively, always tough against rookie quarterbacks. But I think even bigger is you give defensive coordinators in this league three cans, two and a half games of real tape on a rookie quarterback, and they can start to figure them out clearly. Greg Williams was able to capitalize that on on that today. They had the number of Josh Freeman. Today's game was produced by Mike Burks, directed by Sandy Grossman, associate director Tom Yoey, broadcast associate Eric Mandia, technical producer Frank Phillips, pregame show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy, senior producer is Bill Brown, executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gordon and David Hill, statistician in the booth Emmett McGuire, our spotter is always Gary Lynn, computer stats Mark Sosna. And Ty Yoey on the Fox box as well. To our entire crew, we wish everyone a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy the holiday. Tune in to football, Green Bay at Detroit. And wherever you are next week, it's a Fox NFL doubleheader. New Orleans Saints, 10 and 0. They've played a near perfect game. And Drew Brees, 19 for 29, 187 yards, three touchdown passes. As the Saints take care of their division rival, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 38 to 7. We're coming back to Tampa right after these messages. The Saints with a big win. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are one and nine. The seven word recap is brought to you by the new simplified Windows 7. We're going to simplify this game to seven words, right, Tim? Here we go. Saints, Breeze in Tampa to stay perfect. That's the <laughs> yeah. seven word recap brought to you by the new simplified Windows 7. Well, a terrific game for the New Orleans Saints as they stay undefeated. Now let's go to the Meadowlands and Atlanta and the Giants to Kenny Albert.